Hello and uh, welcome. My name is Laura Alameri and in this brief uh, training video, I would like to share with you my personal story on actually how I started raising private money. Because the best way for me to explain is through my own personal story. And if you listen very closely, I'm actually going to share with you some tidbits that will help you to see how easy this can be done if you do it the right way. So back in the 90s, I was actually wholesaling. I started really heavily wholesaling about the mid 90s in like 95, 96. And um, after a couple of years I was wholesaling, I wanted to uh, also venture back into fix and flips and buy and hold. And I'm saying venture back because I'm not going to go back to the original story, but I was actually doing buy and hold at the beginning of the 90s and fix and flips, but I was using hard money and I got totally um, disillusion with using her money because of the fact that um, the fees were so high. So I decided I didn't want to do that anymore until I found a better way. So I went into wholesaling. So then I was wholesaling after a couple of years, 97, I actually started approaching some of my buyers, people buying property for me, mainly for cash and asking them if they wanted to invest with me. So now I knew I had a lot of buyers, some of them using private money, some using uh, different type of financing, but I also knew which buyers were cash from my wholesaling deals. So that was the first thing that, you know, uh, you might want to learn here to pull in your cash buyers to actually be your first private lenders. So I started doing that in 97 and then in 2001, I came up with the idea of, uh, Okay, so what if now I wanted to get more money? So I wanted to really exponentially grow. And what I did is I started contacting title companies I work with, mortgage broker I work with, uh, real estate agents that I work with, and asked them if they knew, I'm sure they knew, I said who they knew that had the money to invest. And I said, you don't have to, you know, give me their names because obviously there was some privacy consideration. But I said, just tell me that I'm putting up a meeting. This was, a, I remember it was in July of 2001. And I said, I want to put the meeting and show them how uh, much they can, you know, their opportunities they can get with investing with me. And I said, obviously I made some agreements with this title company real estate agents that, you know, how we were going to exchange business for them to help me to find these private lenders. So they compiled the list and I gave him an invitation and we sent it via regular mail. Uh, we call it meeting of the minds. And I sent an invitation for them to come to the meeting. So uh, we sent about 60, 70 invitations out. Out of those, about 25 showed up that evening. And uh, some of them were people that I was already working with. So a lot of them were not, and not people that I really knew. And when they came the evening, what I basically did, I shared with them uh, closing statements of bills that I had closed in the previous years. So there was not really any, uh, you know, no PowerPoint, no different type of, you know, really selling me to anything besides the fact of what I already had done. And I showed the closing statement showing, okay, I purchased the property for this much and I sold it for this much and this is my profit and these are the closing statement stamped by the title company. So that was building my credibility, right? So basically just sold itself. Now, one of the things I didn't know that evening, I wasn't prepared for because honestly, I didn't know if this was gonna really work, right? So a lot of things I do in my business, I see if I work first and if I stick, then I, I perfect them. So it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the morale of the story. Just go out there and do it. So what happened is I went out there and um, so the evening, the mainly the questions that came up was how, uh, my pro uh, how is my investment protected? You know, so yeah, I'm going to give you this money. How is it protected? And the second question was, what's the return on my investment, right? It was the ROI. And the third question was how long, how long do I have to give you investment? So with those are three questions. Since then I have developed actually a cheat sheet of questions because there were a lot of questions that were coming through. Um, but those were the three main ones. But even with not doing everything perfect, right, I was actually able to sign up six of them that evening to actually loan me money. Now, the way I did it is because a lot of time people say to you, yeah, okay, you know, I'll give you money just when you have a deal. I really wanted to make them committed to that. So I, uh, I formed actually kind of a partnership 
and uh, I had them sign this partnership and charge them an administration fee of $1,000 to make sure they were serious. So now I knew, now I knew for sure, because they signed the paperwork, they actually invested within the partnership, I knew that they were gonna go ahead and give me the money. I felt very confident. So now I had to go find properties, right? And fast, because I had all, all this money available, hundreds of thousands of dollars, now I need to find properties like ASAP. So I started going to auctions. I started approaching banks and getting their REOs, uh, buying bulk, um, all kinds of things and other things as well. But that's how I started getting property faster because now I had basically a blank checkbook, right? I could get these properties. And, uh, and so this was in 2001, uh, we had a limit of 10 lenders. So within two months, actually, I filled the other four spots from the original six just word of mouth. Um, and then beyond that, for the next year, uh, we built up the business. By the end of 2002, uh, we were actually doing over 20 fix and flips and buy and wholesaling 10 to 15 properties a month just by using private money. So breaking this down now for you, and uh, like I said, that's my story. And the reason I share my story with you is because I want you to see how I, it really can develop for you as well. So the first thing you want to learn from the story is that you need to have some experience, okay? To raise private money where you actually have people investing. I'm, I'm not talking about institutional private money or going to a hard money lender or going somewhere and ask for the money. No, I'm talking about people actually working with you, investing the money. That's the money partner. This is where you want to get to so that you have uh, full funds availability. Now, um, with that said, uh, the first thing you need to do is experience. So if you're brand new in the business, if you've never done any deals, if you have no money, you have nothing, well, you get your experience is by wholesaling, okay? So that's what I learned from it. If I had done this a few years before, before I had my wholesaling experience, I doubt I would have been that successful. So wholesaling is the first thing you wanna do. And the other thing you wanna do is build a relationship and trust with your lenders. Um, that's the thing you wanna do, you know, it's just, a, a matter of really, it, it was easier for me once I got the first few because it was word of mouth and actually I had a waiting list and beyond the 10, eventually we opened it up to six more, we got 16. But then what's happening is the money of the original 10 started rolling and growing. So we didn't open it up for any more for years. And um, so, you know, for my original group, I had more than enough funds to do what we needed to do. Like I said, over 20 fix and flips and 10 to 15 wholesale deals a month but you build a relationship. You want to have full transparency. Once you start having this money, every month we run meetings, every month we talk. Uh, I have full transparency on what is going on on every deal. They don't want to look at the deals, but regardless, I'm giving them all the information. Uh, the other thing is that you want to learn from the story is that because of the experience, you know, I established the relationship and trust with other investors then I was able to actually convert some of my cash buyers to become my first lenders, right? So if you remember when I said 97, 98, that's the first thing I did. I actually changed some of my cash buyers to become investors. And then uh, by being out there and connecting with title company, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, then I tapped into their own resources of where these investors were, because then I was able to bring them on board. And you always want to make a win-win situation, right? What's in for them? Like with my mortgage broker, obviously she was doing the loans. She was getting that type of referrals. We also opened up a partnership together so that we can get business through the partnership. So she was going to make a percentage on the partnership model. Uh, the same thing with the title company, I was going to bring them in business, not only the business that was coming from the investors that they were uh, referring me to, <coughs> excuse me, but also from investors that, that I had. So I gave them a lot of my personal business. So you want to create win-win situation. That's how you're going to people work with you. You can't really give them money per se, uh, especially with mortgage brokers or title company, because that's illegal. It's called kickbacks. Uh, but you can establish this relationship that are mutually beneficial. And the other thing you want to be careful about is, um, and this is something that came actually later after 2001, more after 2007, 2008 happened, that the Security Exchange Commission, the SEC, wanted to regulate. So they really want the investor to establish <coughs> relationships with the 
with the uh, money partner before they get any money. So you have to be very careful. Like for example, go read the regulations. You can keep it easy. You don't have to file reports or anything like that, but you have to do it a certain way. The most important thing you have to start with transparency, uh, do it what I call the rule of 345. You will have to meet them three times within 45 days before they give you money. So some things have changed. Uh, if you do transaction intrastate within your state, instead of going through state lines, you don't have to um, uh, do any special reporting. The other thing that I do is I create partnership between me and the private lenders as an LLC or a corporation for specific deals so that we keep ownership together. So there's different things that you want to do to set it up, but it all starts and that's easy, honestly, you know, if you find a, an attorney that is knowledgeable on this, or actually I do a lot of training about this as well. So if you want to check uh, uh, my website, but the most important thing is to really establish this relationship, get your experience going, um, and then go out there and do it. You know, you're not going to know if it works until you do it. Right. And you, it does work, but it's all about you starting somewhere. So if you have no experience, go with wholesaling. If you do have an experience, use that, leverage that to see, to show people what you've done so far so you can do more and say, okay, I've been able to do these deals on my own or using hard money. Just imagine if we could work together and I can use your money. Look at the ROI return on investment I can give you. Look at, uh, the potential here in turning your money over and over again and making potentially 10, 20 ROI a year on your money. So you have to put that together. And uh, like I say, it's great because now you have a blank checkbook to do all the deals you want. So I just want to share with you a little story here. And uh, also if you want to download, there is a free ebook I love to share with you. It's basically how I break down my business in the seven steps and it goes from the beginning and this is the same steps we use nowadays to do our deals so make sure you download the ebook that i'll give you as a free resource and if you're interested specifically in private money please check my website and i have more information on how to uh, do private money made easy i call it which is training specifically on raising private money and uh, how my experience will be showed in paperwork and actual facts Great. Thanks for taking this time and I hope to see you at the next training.